Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and today's broadcast is going to be probably the most thought-provoking, biblical, prophetic message I think I've ever delivered in my entire life. Uh, the very title of it, Pentagon Scientists, have they stumbled upon the prophetic words of Jesus is a major statement. It's going to take a little time to present this. In fact, what I'm presenting to you was in part going to be one of our disclosure broadcasts over on our Patreon channel. But the deeper I studied in this, the more I realized I need to share this with everyone because it's biblical. And again, I would have to say a conjecture. I don't want to say this is absolute 100 percent all this is what the bible prophecy means where jesus speaks in matthew 24 uh speaking about the lightning coming out of the east shining into the west and so shall the coming of the man son of man be uh, we're going to be looking at that from the hebrew version of shem tov's uh translation of that i think that's going to be very eye-opening as well and i'm going to be sharing from my notes where i speak with uh scientists uh, that work with the Pentagon. I'm going to be sharing some of those notes with you here. Uh, that's what I do over on Patreon when we're doing disclosure. I take very, very detailed notes like shorthand, and so therefore I'm able to give a more accurate picture of the thoughts and things that are coming upon the earth. And this was one of those disclosures uh, that I was going to be sharing, talking about plasma lightning uh, now, some of this I've already talked to you guys about anyway, as far as the coming storms, things of that nature. Uh, but like, like I always say, if it's something that I think is critical for your knowing, I'm going to share that here as well. So everyone is able to hear it. Uh, on Patreon, though, we normally get into disclosures. That it, it doesn't really matter uh, whether we're talking about fallen angels, uh, alien uh, technology, things like that. I share things there. They just pique the interest of our Patreon community, and uh, so that's a blessing for them. So I have my notes laid out here, and we're going to get into those notes here in just a little bit. Uh, and before I share this video here, Strange Plasma Lightning and Thunder, this was on June 19th, 2020, uh, and this is on the channel of To Those Who Will Listen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a link in the description here for you guys so you can actually look at this very, very fascinating video that he shows. Uh, here. But before I show that, let me first look at a scripture here over in Matthew 24. Now, we're this is only one of the scriptures, but we're also going to get into heaven and earth passing away. It's very important we understand that. But Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 27, For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, and then, oh, let me go ahead and read verse 28 as well. For, the, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. You know, it's interesting. When you look at the Hebrew Matthew, it doesn't say eagles, it says buzzards. So, you know, I know a lot of people think that as a positive scripture, but I think it's more of a negative scripture on that one right there. But even the English translation is not as accurate in the from Greek to English or even when we especially when we compare this to the Hebrew version. And therefore, I have a feeling that our Pentagon scientist friends may very well have stumbled upon a biblical prophecy, and these guys don't even know they've stumbled upon a biblical prophecy, the very prophetic words of Jesus. Again, let's keep in mind, I'm presenting this as a conjecture, not as an absolute, this is what's going to happen. So follow me as we go through this. And, and before we get going further, let's continue down in the Matthew 24 reading. And you remember, there were wars and rumors of wars earlier in Matthew. Uh, nation against nation, earthquakes in divers places, right? And then Jesus says, as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Now I'm going to come back to that because we got to break down the translation. But to get to grasp where we're going to from this, let's finish reading the prophecy here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall uh, gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Boy, think about that one. I I'm not even going to go into that verse there. Because that would make too many people <laughs> really begin to say, whoa. Those of you that have the ability to really think deep, think about that one for a little bit. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know the summer is nigh. So likewise, uh, you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day or hour knoweth no man, not even, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days, of, days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. My mind is in 50 different directions already as I read this, knowing the things that I know right now. Jesus is laying out things for you to think about. He's comparing the destruction of heaven and earth even to that of the days of Noah. So you got to think upon those lines. But this really key verse that I never, and, I, and I've wondered about it many times, verse 27, where as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That has always puzzled me. And I like many other scholars and biblical students as well. I've always taken the uh, allegoric idea. Okay. And we assume not lightning, but just light, you know, light like the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. But you can go through scripture and look up sun and shine and all that kind of things. And the verbiage that is used in the Greek form here, as well as the Hebrew Shem Tovs, it has nothing to do with just a glow of light like the sun. And so it's not speaking of the sun. It literally is speaking of lightning, a flash of light. In the Hebrew Shem Tov's gospel, I'll bring it up for you right here. Top of your screen, left-hand side in the Hebrew, Ot Amalehem Yashuv La Talamadav Komo, okay, tell him about that's, that's his students, his disciples. Okay, Komo Shehabarach. And that means, so as the lightning, Barak, like the, like uh, Barack Obama, right? His name means lightning. As the lightning, Yotse, that literally means goes out. As the lightning goes out. Okay, in other words, it's going out, away from, away from, not coming in. Yotze bezmerach, it goes out from the east. Venawa, and we see, okay, it is seen, okay, and we see this. Bemearav, even unto the to the west. So as that light is going out from the east, it'll even be seen all the way to the west. Then he goes on to say in that same verse, in English they translate, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. It says, ken, which is yes, or thus, tehaya, tehaya, thus it will be, be'yatav, thus it will be 
the uh, as the coming shaben haadam. Thus, it will be as the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, what it's saying here in the Hebrew, if I could say it a little bit more in layman's terms in English, when the fulfillment of the lightning that goes that come that goes out from the east and then is actually comes back and is seen in the west, once that happens, and it's gone, gone, in other words, gone full circle, that's when the Son of Man is going to come at that time. If you look at the Greek breakdown, they translate shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The word shall also, it could be used, but not necessarily it is the preferred way. So shall also. No, it could just be as that shineth even of the West, even so, or, or when, you could actually put the word when, when the coming of the Son of Man will be. In other words, the coming of the Son of Man will be at the fulfillment of that climatic event. Okay, then wait a minute then. Now this kind of paints it in a different picture. If you begin to look at the true translation of the words, we compare this to the Hebrew, compare this to the Greek that we have, and we begin to realize, just like we had up in Matthew 24 to begin with, there's a signs of things that are going to happen on the earth. Right? Remember all these other ones? Um, you know, because they're talking about when, it, when it, basically, when's everything going to happen? They're, the disciples asked that after he said there won't be one stone left upon another. Talking about the third temple or second temple. He said, You shall hear of wars, rumor for wars, see, be not trouble, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, diverse places. These are only the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. They shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Many will be offended, betray one another, right? But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Then we have the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. Uh, he that is in G Judea, when you hear about these things, you know, that's actually was fulfilled 2,000 years ago at the destruction of the Second Temple, and that was applying to the, to, the, to, the, to the Jewish people of that day. You know, don't go back into your house. Because if you don't, if, you know, that's why it says, well, those with child who get stuck in those days, right? But then he gets all the way down. And verse 21 kind of concludes the issue of what happened 2,000 years ago, or 70 AD, the destruction of the Temple, Jerusalem, uh, for then shall be great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. They went through the greatest tribulation period that we could have ever thought about. But verse 22, oh, I'm sorry, not verse 22, but, you know, then the days, except they be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But we get down to verse 27. Let me go back to verse 26. Wherefore? If they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. We've actually entered into that time frame now. There are really a lot of different, whether it be the rabbis of Israel talking about the coming of the Messiah, uh, or people claiming to be the Messiah. Um, everybody is, and their grandmother seems to be a prophet or a prophetess. And everybody's claiming Jesus is here. Jesus is with us, so to speak. Don't believe it. Christ came 2,000 years ago. He did the mission. He did his job. He fulfilled the job. When he comes back, he's coming back to do what? To do what John says over here, and it's only in John's gospel this is recorded. John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3 specifically. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So the place that Jesus went and prepared is not going to be here on this earth. Well, that would make more sense because over in Matthew Chapter 24, as we go down a little further, verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Hmm. 
heaven and earth will pass away? Maybe there's something about this millennial reign idea that we're missing, right? Because that's going to all pass away. And Jesus said he's going to have to send his angels to gather his elect from the four winds of heaven. He's going to be doing that before all this passes away. But he gives us in verse 27 something to look at that brings about a destruction that's going to cause the passing of both heaven and earth. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. And then he compares it. But at that day and hour, no, no man, not even the angels of heaven. I believe the angels of heaven are the archons, the fallen angels is who he's referring to. But my father only. Then he compares it to the days of Noah, saying the coming of the son of man shall be, whereas in the days of Noah were uh, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. So he gives you a, a sign of, of what the times will be like. And that marriage and the eating and things were the fallen angels cohabitating with women, producing children on the earth, Nephilim children. And of course, their diet was cannibalism. But they didn't even know it. Notice again, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, what's the antecedent to verse 39? Think about it. What's the antecedent? Okay, the antecedent, they knew not until the flood came and took them away. Verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day, verse 36, an hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven. Wow, drop back down to verse 39 again. They knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who knew not? The Nephilim and the Nephilim. The Nephilim are the fallen angels or the fallen ones. The Nephilim, their children, they didn't know until the destruction that caused the flood itself came upon the earth. Now you know Jesus when he says not even the angels of heaven know, except his father only. And that's the same thing going on right now. I have spent hours with scientists from the Pentagon discussing those that actually have worked with entities that are fallen angels that are fearful of the use of nuclear weapons because, as they have said, it will destroy not only our world, but it actually, a nuclear bomb affects even other worlds and other dimensions. And we have proven that there are other worlds and other dimensions using the Hydrant Collider, CERN it's better known as, not just in Switzerland, where there are six of those that are operable around the world, including the ones that I'm aware of. We have one in Texas, we have one in New York, and don't think that the one in Texas is not working. Yes, it is. Uh, we have one in Antarctica, we have one, uh, of course, the one in Europe, uh, and there's several others, but I, I only know about those four right there and what their capables are. I think we actually have three in America, but I don't know where the third one is. With the Hydrogen Collider, we have been able to find parallel universes with another world that's just like Earth, with a sun like ours, humans living on it like us, and they claim that it's the same people in a different time zone. In one of those worlds, it's 1950 right now, roughly, they're about, in the 50s. And the people are living out their lives like an alternate reality. Now, I know that sounds like nuts to even say that, right? And I'm not saying, oh, I believe all that, or I don't. I don't really know. I can only tell you what I've been told. In fact, if you think of some of the biblical passages we just read, think about that statement with those biblical passages in Matthew 24 and really begin to think a little deeper. Maybe that might make more sense. I don't know. Conjecture, as I said. So we look at this and we see 
that the fallen angels did, they don't know when this is going to happen. Neither did they know during the times when the Andalusian destruction took place. But Jesus gave us all the answers, and I think scientists may very well have stumbled upon Jesus's prophetic words, and they don't even know it. So I would say to my friends at the Pentagon and for the scientists that are there, you need to listen to this video yourself. You have stumbled upon something you don't realize you stumbled across. And I think we're going to unravel this. So I'm going to share some very interesting insights on this issue. Um, and, and by the way, I got to show you something here. We're going to jump over here to Ezekiel. And just for a moment. And the reason I wanted to do this is because, you know, I sit there and I think to myself when I talk to our friends over on Patreon and we begin to talk about uh, fallen angels and government people refer to these people as aliens, extraterrestrial beings. Uh, there are many, many different species, quote unquote species of these beings. I look at them all as fallen angels, Satan's minions operating in different realms, different parallel universes, uh, operating in our own our own universe, operating in our own planet, inside the planet. Uh, many, many different things that we disclose on our Patreon channel, Israeli News Live, and I'll put a link in there so you can go there if you'd like to, to see some of the things that we speak about there. But then I think to myself, as we have in Ezekiel, you look at this and you can't help but wonder, <laughs> this is supposed to be heavenly beings, right? But it only shows you the, the, the vast differences, right? This is in Ezekiel chapter 1, right? Behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, a great cloud with a fire flashing up, so that a brightness was round about it, and out of the midst thereof as a color of electrum out of the midst of the fire, and in the midst thereof came the likeness of fire, Four living creatures. Four living creatures. All right. And there, this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces. Every one of them had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of a burnished brass. You know. I mean, I mean, let me let me just show something for you here, real quick, right? Uh, human beings feet uh, like a like a calf, right? Let's just do that, right? Let me put Egypt. Let's put because uh, I think some of this, some of these type things are depicted uh, in Egypt in the statues. Uh, let me put on there. Statue, ancient Egypt, that type thing. I, I forget. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but let me just see. All right, here's a, here's a good example right here, though. The heads, anyway. We don't have the feet, but you have the head, head of a bird, head of, a, head of some other kind of animal there. Uh, and yet, these things are being depicted in Egypt already. Some of the weirdest looking things you could ever imagine, right? I mean, you guys know about this stuff. It's not like you don't. You know, there's some really strange things that are depicted. I can't find it right now, but I know I've seen imagery like that, though, even where the feet, though, is more like that of, you know, an, an, uh, an animal versus that of a human. But Ezekiel is describing these type beings looking just like that. They have wings. They got, they got a stature like a man, but they got four different faces, right? Got a calf's foot. And they had the hands of a man under their wings and their four sides and other faces and wings uh, for them. We go a little further down, verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they had the face of a man. They had a, four had the face of a lion on the right side, and their four had a face of an ox. And on the left side, they had four had a, also the face of an eagle. And that's where their face is. And then we are worried about the way these fallen angels might look reptilian. Uh, there's one that looks similar to that of a, uh, a praying mantis. Look very human, but just kind of the, you know, and that's one the Israeli government works with too, by the way, the reptilians and that mantis type of, of creature. But notice also, it's not just that. 
Get down here a little further, right? Let's start at verse 18. As for their rings, they were high and they were dreadful, and their four had their rings full of eyes round about. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went hard by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the bottom, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, as the spirit was to, to go uh, thither, so they went. And the wheels were lifted up beside them, for the spirit of these living creatures was in the wheels. The spirits were inside the wheels. Sounds, almost sounds like a UFO, right? When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. When those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up beside them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. And over the heads of the living creatures, there was the likeness of a firmament, like the color of the terrible ice stretched forth over their heads above. Now, I'm not making it up. This is biblical. And you got to remember, Satan mimics that of the biblical. So if, they, if he has his own fallen angels, those angels, we would have to argue then, would say, well, we'll just say for the sake of argument, we're once part of the heaven, heavenly realm. Well, if the heavenly realm is already describing what we're seeing here in Ezekiel, face like an eagle, but they got a body like a human, things like that then why are people so worried about fallen angels and we describe them as some kind of alien-looking creatures? Just think about it, right? That's all I'm asking you to think about what we're doing when we're thinking something is so outlandish. Now, let's go back. As I said, Matthew, uh, again, I want to, I wanna, before we go any further, I want to jump over here to Matthew 27 in the Hebrew version here. Oop, oop, don't want to do all that. Let me see if I can just highlight doesn't let me let you know let me highlight it like that again jesus said to his disciples as the lightning comes from the east and it is seen in the west so will be the coming of the son of man actually so will be the tav so will be the coming or so will be in other words that in other words this is when the coming of the son of man will be fulfilled when a lightning and it's literally barak Okay, for those of you that really don't understand Hebrew, you can't see me point to this. Maybe, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, so I'll go over. yashav, latalamadav. You know, he's saying to his students, como, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Como is the sixth word. Seventh word is where it's a compound, shehabarak, the lightning, which is that the lightning, yotse, the next word is yotse, which means goes out. And it's seen, okay, it goes out uh, from the west, b'mezerach, and it's seen in the east. This is where the conjecture comes in. I think Jesus laid out a timeline. And I'm going to share with you what I think that timeline might be. Now, oddly enough, as I was speaking to one of the scientists uh, from the Pentagon, I was being told a very fascinating theory that the scientists have about plasma lightning that is about to come upon the earth. So before I get into that, that let me just, let me take you back to this one video here from To Those Who Will Listen, his channel here, Strange Plasma Lightning and Thunder. I wanna play this video for you so you can see it and then we're going to talk about this scripture and we're going to talk about what scientists believe is causing this plasma lightning. All right, let's, let's look at it, look at this. Good morning to those of us, it's June 19th, 2020, 1.35 a.m. And there's some weird, oh my, are you seeing this? There's some really strange lightning and strange thunder, and it's mainly in this area here, but oh my. <laughs> in a way, it's really weird because it's dark until, I mean, it's really like dark. There's like no street lights on for some reason. I mean, there are, but they're not, not right around this area. And... I think there's more stuff in this area, but where those trees are. All right. 
What he's sharing with you there is what scientists are very concerned about that is going to intensify dramatically and it's going to be thunderstorms that have plasma lightning within them. Now, I want to share another clip with you, and this is from a documentary about Japan's Hiroshima bomb. I'm gonna share just about a, about a 40 second clip. I want you to listen to what's being said here about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the bombs that we dropped uh, 77 years ago. And then I'm going to share with you from my notes that I take and meetings that I get to be a part of here. I want to share with you those notes. And then we're going to go back and look at this biblical passage and see what it may all come together as. Let's look at this real quick and listen in very carefully what's said here. July 16th, 1945, of that first successful detonation of a nuclear weapon in New Mexico, Robert Oppenheimer the head of the Los Alamos laboratory, reacted this way. Blind from the Hindu scripture, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Less than a month later, the Enola Gay drops an A-bomb above Hiroshima. It explodes 2,000 feet above the earth. Tens of thousands die instantly. We shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. Three days later, Nagasaki is the target, with a similar result. American Howard Kakita, then seven years old, had been standing on the... All right. What I wanted you to be able to see in this particular footage here is the events 77 years ago when the U.S. dropped the bombs, these atomic bombs on Japan, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Those bombs created a ripple effect. And what's interesting is even the quote that was made in the video that um, this man right here said, um, let me see, get the exact words of what he says. Uh, well, let's just play it again. And then I want you to listen to what he says there. Uh, he's quoting the Hindu scripture when he says it, but it's the verbiage. Listen. Reacted this way. Blind from the Hindu scripture, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I spoke. Now, I have become death, the destroyer of worlds, plural. By the way, what they're putting on there, uh, or they're doing it a little bit late, it's kind of delayed in their, in their words on the screen there. Uh, the destroyer of worlds is what he says. I have become death, now I'm the destroyer of worlds. Japan, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, is in the Far East. This is where I want you to, like I said, a conjecture. I don't say this is absolutely, but it's a conjecture. Of the words of Jesus, as the lightning shineth, and literally in the Hebrew, it doesn't even say shines, as the lightning shehabarak, that the lightning goes out, a burst of lightning or a burst of light that goes out from the east. And then it's coming in, or it will be from the east, then it will be seen in the west. Could we be looking at what happened in Japan 70-something years ago, fulfilling that prophecy, because that's when Jesus comes is when not the lightning itself going out, but the ripple effect of what's going to happen as a result. Bear with me. Please listen closely because I want you to see where I'm going with this. Um, from even from the scientists themselves. 
all right, from the scientists themselves. Let's take a look. I'm going to take and share with you from my notes because I was discussing, we were discussing the storms that are supposed to come beginning this year. Mid-September is the time frame when we were looking at storms getting much worse that will come with plasma lightning in them, not just the storms, but the earthquakes that are happening on the earth is all as a result of the earth receiving in this energy. I've talked about this before with you guys. There is an energy that the earth is absorbing, which is heating up the core of the earth. And that energy, the scientists have not really been sure where it's coming from. No one seemed to know what the source was, but I learned recently there is a theory that they have that this energy is actually a direct result of the nuclear bombing of Japan 70-something years ago. I'm going to read to you my notes so you can see why this is believed, that, uh, the, 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 why this theory is there. And then I began to look at this from a biblical aspect and I'm blown away by it because the results of that energy is what's causing plasma lightning on the earth. So we are we could say then in this case, we are seeing the effects of what happened some 70 something years ago in Japan. Let me share with you the notes here. Forecast has been has been September when things are supposed to get really bad. However, it may be a little earlier than September. There are some indicators that there is a lot more electrical pressure in our spheres. I'm talking about the ionosphere, the stratosphere, etc. And that pressure is building faster than what government scientists had anticipated. If you are more acute in your awareness, you need to pay close attention to the thunderstorms, and it should be obvious something is different. Thunderstorms are going to have a feeling of potency that is much greater, far more intense. The lightning will seem to be different. The, the, the thunder from that lightning will seem to be different. Originally, scientists had forecasted mid-September and now they have disclosed the events are speeding up and these forecasts could begin in August instead of mid-September. There are expectations for something to happen in Alaska and Hawaii and that the subsubduction zone is at a very high risk. Of course, subsubduction zone out of the Pacific is what causes the earthquakes, things of that nature. The question was raised, what substantiates all of this? What substantiates all these claims? The scientists contended that the Earth is being bombarded with incoming energy from an unknown source, as well as energy from planets in our solar system, including the Sun and Jupiter, which, you know, the Sun and Jupiter are what they consider to be primers for the Earth. Things that, that the Sun releases and things that Jupiter releases really heightens the effects on the Earth. If we have a, if we have a, a solar storm and we have a, we have a blast that goes out, you're going to have earthquakes here on the Earth. And because of the Sun releasing huge amounts of energy and the Earth not releasing its energy, this is what's causing the expectation by scientists to... to move the forecast of severe thunderstorms, earthquakes, volcanic activity. They're expecting this thing to begin sooner. We expect floods like in Germany, but there is a focus on the thunderstorms. The Pentagon's top scientists are saying it's beyond a supercharged thunderstorm. It's more... Uh, of a discussion of plasma being involved. I'm talking about plasma lightning. Supposedly, the scientists are trying to suppress hurricanes with heart, but of course, there's always a problem with that. The scientists, they tend to focus on the effects and less on the cause. This is where it gets important right here. 
Like medicine, doctors don't focus on cause as much as they, as they do the effect or the symptoms of what the patient is suffering with. There are many levels, even going into the multidimensional levels, that have an effect on issues that occur, and our scientists know so little of these areas, so it makes it harder for them to determine the cause. Thus, it's the effects is what they're focused on. Now, I can tell you from other conversations that we've had in the past, I'm not finished with the notes here, but in other conversations that I have had, I was told that the extraterrestrials, the fallen angels, were always against humans on this earth using nuclear power as a weapon, creating bombs. I mean, granted, spaceships, we have. I did a broadcast the other day on Patreon disclosing information about our one spaceship that we have that's, that's a kilometer long that we use for interplanetary uh, travel. And it's actually an international type of spaceship uh, that does diplomatic message, missions between these fallen angels. It should be no wonder. I mean, the fallen angels were given technology to Cain and his children. We think of it just being, oh, wow, they got some really cool tools to be able to plow the garden with. No, it was much more than that. We just don't see that big picture. So what's the difference now? Fallen angels were given technology to man back uh, almost 6,000 years ago. What do you think they're giving them now? Nuclear power, including nuclear powered craft, nuclear powered aircraft, not just ships, spacecraft as well. I go into that on Patreon. You might want to check that out. But at any rate, these fallen angels said that when a nuclear device is detonated on Earth, it affects worlds in other dimensions, not just planets that are further out. You see, the devil and his minions don't want to die either. But what we do here, it seems to be that Jesus was showing you that that's going to be a cause of the earth, heavens and earth passing away when that lightning that goes out from the east, and it literally says goes out from the east, and it's seen in the west when you see that ripple effect come back around. This is about the time that the Son of Man has got to come back to gather his own because he knows that the heaven and earth is about to pass away. And as John 14 says, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Why? Jesus knew that they were going to destroy themselves on this side. So he's got to get a place ready for us to go to. Now, I know that might trample on some doctrines, but I guarantee you one thing. If you really know the truth of those doctrines, you wouldn't be looking at a future a kingdom living with a bunch of rabbis in Israel that don't even believe Jesus Christ to be the Messiah, you would actually be focused on what Jesus said and not these backslidden messianic preachers out here preaching to you, telling you that there's uh, this, this kingdom going to come and you're all going to be up under a bunch of backslidden rabbis that are Pharisees, as Jesus said, that were a generation of vipers, reptilians. Think about what you're getting yourself involved in. Let's continue with the notes. An example, atomic bombs that are detonated, like in the case of Hiroshima, can have effects 50 plus years even more later. So as odd as that may sound, scientists at the Pentagon theorize that this incoming energy is actually the ripple effects from the nukes we set off over Japan. What do you know? Like the ripple effect of a rock in a lake, scientists have noted the fingerprint of energy is consistent of the fingerprint of energy that has that was released over Japan. You guys ever watch Forensic Files? Peter Thomas, late Peter Thomas, he was the narr narrator of Forensic Files. Very good friend. Actually, we interviewed Peter here on Israeli News Live. We did an audio recording of, of him uh, quite a few years back, a few years before he passed away. I knew Peter. He lived down in Naples, Florida. Uh, would go there to his house. Got to see when he, he, he actually built a new home 
him and his wife. His wife was still alive at the time. And they moved to a new place there and he would show me his recording studio and stuff and how he did the, the narrations for the forensic files. Still doing it, even when I think I think he was in his 80, late 80s or something at the time, uh, last time I saw him. And uh, But anyway, on the forensic files, they always complain they, they use in these uh, in the forensic investigation of some cases gases for example or chemical compounds uh, of certain fibers and when they put them in these uh, whether it be uh, different electron microscope or they use some kind of thing that determines the chemical makeup and that's how they're able to say well that chemical was used in this crime over here it's the exact same fingerprint so to speak and then they can prove a crime like that. Well, this is what the scientists have discovered with this energy that's coming into the earth that the earth is receiving, is that we're receiving the same energy that we detonated over Japan 77 years ago. That nuclear bomb, even as these fallen angels have told the scientists, when you detonate a nuclear bomb, it doesn't just affect you on the earth, it affects other worlds. It affects other dimensions. And they've even said it can destroy in another dimension worlds. They may have knew, knew more about what Jesus had to say in Matthew than what we realize. And Jesus says is that lightning goes out from the east. And of course, Japan is the far east and is seen in the west. Could, he, could Jesus been prophesying of the ripple effect of what we would do to Japan? And what we're seeing now is the, is the results of that energy coming back into the earth. The earth absorbing the energy. We can't seem to release that energy now. And now that energy is going to cause the destruction of this planet ultimately. Plasma lightning. I was told that plasma lightning could cause a hole so deep in the earth it would reach the mantle. Scientists have theorized that the Grand Canyon, pre-destruction of the Andalusian world, which it is believed was used of some type of nuclear power bomb was used and destroyed the pre-Andalusian civilization. And as a result, we had a plasma lightning that struck and caused the, the formation of the Grand Canyon. It is believed that it is radiation that caused the death in the Sahara Desert as well as the deserts over there uh, in uh, Arizona. I don't know. Maybe. So, uh, I think we're really seeing Jesus' words in a whole different light that we've never thought about before. And what happened at Hiroshima in Japan is now going to come back, as the expression is, bite us in the behind. That energy that the earth is, is absorbing is what's causing the earthquakes. It's what's causing the earth to stretch. It's what's going to be causing the water to seep up uh, that is going to cause the marshlands, Florida, to turn into a swamp, basically. It's what's going to cause the plasma lightning, the storms, the floods, everything, all the calamities that are coming upon the earth right now may be as a result of what we did to the Japanese. And that would actually make more sense because from what I've been told, the United States is going to catch the brunt of all this chaos. Yeah, other parts of the world are going to catch it too, but we're going to catch it even more so. The West Coast when the Cascadia goes, is expected to take and break off a large chunk of land and slide off into the ocean. Think about it. Like I said, it's a conjecture. This message is no doubt a shocker for me. It was a shock for me. It's a shock for me to deliver it, but I feel that it's really true. Um, don't forget, I'll, I'll put a link below for you about our Patreon channel. But if what we say here is a blessing to you and you want to support the work we do, IsraeliNewsLive.org, please support this mission. 
You can donate online just by clicking right there on the right hand side of your screen, donate online, you can click there. Uh, our mailing address right there to Noon Institute, PO Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee. Of course, is appearing at the top, Stephen Binoon. My last name and the name of the institute are two different names. Uh, Danoon is the pen name we use. Ben Noon is my actual name. Uh, but if you would like to be, uh, if God lays it upon your heart to support the work we're doing, we really appreciate it. Even joining Patreon is a support to this ministry. It only costs a dollar a month. Um, and now I've got into the Disclosure Project, which I'm really having a lot of fun sharing these things with people. Uh, but serious things like we're doing today will always be available to everyone. Biblical teaching will always be available to everyone. Uh, I, I like doing this and also in the multiple languages that we do this. And I found out recently, and I won't say who, but we found out a very interesting uh, uh, gentleman who is an ambassador to one of the nations around the world listens to Israeli news live. Uh, and he actually is listening to it in his own native language. Thanks to iConnectFX.com, and I really I want to thank our friends at iConnectFX.com um, because those guys there have made our teachings uh, appear in a way that was never thought possible before. I click trending. This is not my account, but you can see we're we're like top videos on there all the time. Uh, Jesus in the temple, etc. But what's really nice about these guys here is what they have done, uh, and I want to see if I can find one. Maybe, let's see, let me see what the top one's there. Jesus in the temple, maybe that's in another language. Let me see. Oh, the other one I know is. Um, Good morning. Let me just see there. Uh, we don't, that one's not, I think it's the reptilian one is. Let me go back real quick. Um, we've got a couple of uh, transcribers that are helping edit the that help edit the uh, good evening the 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 English so we can put it in other languages here's a good example right here uh, and so for example if you want to listen to that video in Spanish you just click on Spanish noches amigos Esteban Benun con noticias israelíes en vivo hear me speak en, in, in y con x.com x so, y escuchen aquello. we really thank the, the team there they're getting a lot of response from people that want to, you know, e e they're even setting it up to where they have webinars in here, secure webinars, as it says on the top, secure webinar, free secure webinars. They're setting it up to where you can do your webinar to where you're speaking in English and the person on the other end of the webinar could be hearing in Spanish or whatever language you might choose. Now, that's a very costly endeavor that they do. So if you're going to get into the language aspect, there's a charge for doing that. But you can set your account up with iConnectFX for free. You can use the webinars for free. Uh, it's just when you get into doing uh, other more extensive things, it's, it can, it'll cost extra to do that because it costs the company extra as well. So, and also they don't censor what you put up. I mean, other than, you know, they don't want pornography and things like that. I can't say as I blame them. But uh so anyway, I just wanted you to be aware of that. Subscribe. Go to our, I'll put the link in, in the description below as well. Subscribe there. Please join up. It is a tremendously good platform. And, uh, you know, like I said, because of the foreign language aspect, uh, you know, it's just really amazing. Even this one here, Korean. I thought that was an interesting one, right? There you go. 다시 말하지만 중요하다면. So, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. And also, I want to thank uh, each one of you personally that have that have contributed towards um, the procedure I have to have done for my lower spine. I've got blown out disc. I've got destabilization. Um, a lot of different things that has to be done to correct these problems. And... Uh, We've gotten about halfway there in raising the funds to cover that. And so I want to thank you uh, and I'll be writing you and thanking you as well for those of you that have uh, donated towards that. That really means a lot to me. It shows how much you love me and, and care for us as a family and helping us with that expense. Uh, I wish I had an insurance that would do this, but I don't. And uh, 
But thank you and God bless you for that. If you want to help still contribute to that uh, by mail, you can do that and just make a notation. Uh, surge, you can put on there for a surgery or whatever you want to put on there for that. Uh, but I, I really appreciate that because it's I'm in a bad situation with that. And unfortunately, um, I put it off. My doctor in Europe, who's a uh, back surgeon, it, it recommended that I put the surgery off as long as possible because he said it's, it's a low percentage rate of how you come out on the other end. So he said, wait till you're as far as you can and then deal with it. But now I don't feel my right foot hardly at all. So I got to deal with it now. It's getting to that point. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. You have a